In this video, we're going to take a look at the CNC Mini Mill uh, tuning parameters and different ways that you can make sure that uh, the machine is running uh, running properly. I uh, ran into a few problems, had uh, to do some tests, and I wanted to document it. So if you guys are doing this yourselves, um, you can uh, uh, learn from some of the things that I've gone through. So sit back and enjoy the uh, the ride. Hey folks, this is Tom from Inspiration Metal Works, and I um, appreciate you, uh, you joining me again for uh, another video. Uh, this is uh, another in the CNC mill series that I've been doing. Um, as you know, I've been converting this benchtop uh, desktop mill. It's a, a little X2 uh, Harbor Freight model uh, mini mill, benchtop mill. So very affordable mill, and uh, you know the the conversion kits and things like that make this uh, something that the average person could actually uh, could do on their own. It does require a little bit of technical skill, and um, there's some tuning involved. Uh, it's really made me appreciate the idea of buying a machine that uh, is already just working, right? you know, off the shelf. Um, boy, that Tormach is looking better and better all the time. But um, you know, this is a great way for me to to, uh, to cut my teeth on it and to to learn what to look for. So in this week, I I basically spent a good amount of time just getting the machine running right. Um, we ran into some issues with traversing. Uh, X, uh, X axis was, uh, I thought it was just losing steps. What was actually happening is it was binding, but it took a while to figure out what was going on, what was causing that. So we'll take a look at that. Uh, then I, I noticed I was losing steps in the Y direction too. So, you know, looking at different ways that we can uh, identify what's going on there. Uh, and then lastly, uh, you know, doing this stuff, I'm trying to make parts too. So, um, you know how do I how do I salvage a part when I did lose my zero and, and what did I do? So let's uh, let's go from there. Let's take a look first at um, identifying some of the problems with the x-axis. All right. So in this greatly sped up uh, video segment, uh, you see I'm, I'm running the table back and forth, and as you'll see on the screen, uh, I start to adjust the acceleration. Um, when it pops up, you'll see it's almost vertical here. And so I make some adjustments and have it ramp up more and slowly, uh, ramp up and down more slowly. And I continue just to you know, to tune it, you know, back and forth, different segments, trying to get the uh, the parameters just right and the, the velocity as well as the acceleration, you know, because trying to trying to to determine just how much torque this uh, machine can handle and and what it can take. And so I worked it back and forth, and I thought I got it pretty well, but then you know there's no load yet, so. Let's see what happens next. So thankfully, Brad was uh, really helpful with that. And um, you know, we did identify part of the problem, which was the acceleration. Um, basically, I was trying to make the motors turn way too fast. They could not keep up. They didn't have the torque uh, to uh, to speed up as fast as I was trying to get the, the machine to move. Um, but in doing so, I identified other issues, right? So that only helped somewhat. It was like, did some tests, it's great, but then, it's still binding, right? But not as often, but it's still binding. So what now? Okay, so I did tests earlier, it was working fine. Decided just to do some roughing uh, on this piece, clean it up so I could redo it. Um, and I started getting a bunch of uh, problems with it. I went ahead, I'm just trying to figure out what's going on with this thing, right? So I loosened up the, the gibbs completely and I mean, you guys can see if I put it to jog mode, we'll do one inch jogging, right? Can you hear it? There. Right, so this isn't even a matter of me, you know, holding down the buttons funny or something. Um, so my next step is sort of lo loosen up the mounts here. Let's make sure that everything is just lined up right. All right. So I think I've got my culprit here. Went through. I started stripping stuff down, and I found two things. The first. 
this nut right here at the other end of the ball screw. Right, so basically you've got thrust bearings here. Right? You've got nut, and actually there's this tiny little other nut that goes on you know, in here to lock it in place. I actually used some Loctite um, on this thing to make it a little more rigid. Well, guess what? It was too tight. Right, so by this pre putting too much preload on, that was causing problems. So, um, you know, remember I said I had the, the Gibbs loose and I, I couldn't even move the thing. It was, it was underloaded with my fingers. And you know what, now I can take my fingers and pretty evenly, I, mean, I still feel it binding up just a little bit. So I might loosen that just here. Um, but do that right now. I'm just holding the other end in place here with uh, no, or sorry, a nut, or wrench. Loosen that up just there. And that's feeling pretty good. Right? I'm moving it by hand. I'll do it. I'm gonna run this guy the whole way. Sorry, my arm's in the way of the camera. I'll run it from the other side. But basically, it's moving nice. Now, keep in mind, there's one other thing that I found there to be a problem with this. Give, give itself. I don't know if we can get in close enough to take a look at this. Let's see if we can do this. The focus. All right. So, this part here is a part that goes along the table. There's, I've got a burr here. The entire length of this thing is just all chattered up, right? So I'm gonna take a stone to this and I'm gonna see if I can't get this nice and smooth. And then I'll reinstall the gib and adjust everything, put the motor back on, and I'll bring you back a little later to see how things went. All right, so this one is on me, right? I when I installed the the uh, the, the the lead screw, so it's a it's a ball nut uh, style lead screw. Uh, I had over torqued it, not thinking about the fact that it was actually putting load on the um, uh, on the nut itself there. And you know, with the ball nuts, it, it's got all the the ball bearings that, that go around. But um, yeah, I was, I was putting preload on it. So that was causing a lot of uh, my issues there. Um, I think at one point it wasn't really a problem because the, actually the, uh, the retaining nuts weren't tight. They kept, they would you know, vibrate loose. And so I put some uh, Loctite on and I, you know, some thread lock and I you know, torqued it down and I messed it up, right? So um, I ended up having to adjust that, get that right, things are good that way but then wow did you guys see the the, the gib there I mean that's just ridiculous that that's how uh, this machine came to me it was you know the gibs looking like that because I don't have that much time on these machine on this machine I got it I used it a little bit but I had always had problems with that x-axis and traversing and I either had to loosen the gibs so much that um, it wouldn't um, it wouldn't keep its its place like it would do it would rotate on me and do stuff uh, so I was actually concerned even about making the conversion on this, but, um, you know, nothing that a little elbow grease couldn't fix. Uh, I got rid of the, you know, all the burrs on it. I stoned it nice and smooth. And, um, you know, as you can see here, uh, everything seems to be working okay on the X axis. So let's take a look. All right. I got everything back together. Took a little while. Actually, spent the better part of an hour honing that uh, one of the gibs and then get everything back together, making sure that everything was good and tight. We're, you know, we're traversing fine. So let's, let's take a look. Let me show you where, where we're at today. Uh, right now I've got the um, motor velocity set to 50 inches a minute, X, Y, and Z. I've got the acceleration down to five inches a minute uh, squared technically. Um, 
And I've got a five nanosecond um, delay put on. Um, so basically, I'm just clicking just a little, little at a time here just to show you what I'm doing. And it looks like when I make shift, cover here is going to get in the way. Right. So, anyways, I didn't tighten that down yet. Yeah. Alright, that's just, that's just that's to be snug. It's already got all the, uh, everything on there is fine. It's that, that main nut's locked in. Sorry guys, it's like 10 o'clock at night. I'm exhausted. Um, but it's the only time I had to work on this. Once I got that part going, I started uh, I started cutting, and I realized that um, as I was going along, I actually had to uh, I had to make an adjustment. I was getting you know, my roughing operation worked fine, everything was okay, and and then I went to to do a very fine operation. I'm using a one thirty second end mill. I mean, this thing is tiny. In fact, I bought two of them, and the first one didn't even make it out of the packaging. Right, I, I went to open it, and it fell and broke. I right? like, never even made it into the machine. Right? So this 132nd end mill, I'm getting ready to do some real fine cutting, so I adjusted the height to do a dry run, and I look at it, and it's, it's off by, you know, 200 thousandths. It's like, what, you know, in, in the Y, and it's like, what the heck's going on with that? Um, well, what I found was that, uh, you know, I had lost, I had lost steps in the Y direction. So I would corrected everything in the X axis now, but now I'm losing it in the Y. But I don't understand it. It's like, well, I wasn't binding, your free travel, everything was okay. So, uh, and, I, and lastly, I had cut the part, right? So I didn't want to lose that. Uh, so what I did was I actually went ahead and um, in, uh, in Fusion 360, I'm looking at the part itself going, okay, well, I need to come up with a new work coordinate system that's based on something that I've already cut, right? And so I found a peak uh, in in the, uh, the part that I could use, I made that my new my new uh, x y zero point. So I put the new work coordinate system in, and I was able to go ahead and uh, finish the part out. I had to make an adjustment for this S, which tells me either this whole piece here is shifted, and you know what just happened, just so everybody knows, right? When I was uh, Getting ready to start. Let me zoom out. Let's zoom out a little bit. I don't know if you guys can see it from the same. The back of the um, the projecting part of the vise actually hit the um, hit the back of the the mill, and so my guess is because of that, it actually lost some steps. So thankfully. I was able to figure out what caused the problem, right? Um, it was actually that I was hitting the back of the mill with the uh, with the mounting uh, bracket for the um, for the vise, right? It stuck out so much further that I wasn't getting full depth of motion. Right? The you know, the Y travel couldn't go as far as it was supposed to, and so as the uh, the cutting tool was traversing in the y ac uh, axis. There were times that I was telling it to go well within the work envelope of the machine, but it was tapping. And each time it would tap that back side, it would lose a little bit of uh, of its uh, y position. So uh, I ended up, as you, I don't know if you actually could see it too well in there, but I ended up by uh, uh, taking the vise off, mounting it directly to the table, and uh, finishing up my operations from there. So that's it for today. I'm um, not a terribly exciting uh, set of videos, but uh, if you are running into problems, you know, if you're doing one of these conversions, or if you've done a conversion like this already and have something to add, let me know. Uh, I'd be glad to, to collaborate and, and talk about you know, what I've been going through. I'd love to get advice. Um, thankfully, there's been several people in here who've uh, been able to help. Um, one of the other issues that I was running into on the stepping was the uh, the pulse width, 
right? Uh, my pulse width was too, sm uh, too small, and so I had to change the pulse width uh, so that each time it tells it to move a step, right, it was going too short and it didn't always move the, the whole step. Right? So little things like that. There's a lot of things that go into tuning these machines to get them, uh, to get them working right, and so I'd be glad to, to uh, discuss it with people, and I'm always, always open for suggestions. So thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it, and hopefully I will see you guys again soon. Thanks. Thank you.